I mentioned last week that we chopped the sump up. So the sump's back on, we lifted the motor up, put it back on with that bottom missing. So now we've actually put a false bottom in there just out of a bit of one mil steel to get enough room for that rack. And we've got just enough clearance to do that both to the rack and also on the inside. And then because we've knocked 30 mil off the bottom and the aim is to get the engine sump up to the same height as the, the transmission. So you can see the pickup here hanging out down the bottom. So that'll obviously go back up. So we've taken 30 mil off the bottom of the sump. And then we're just trialing how much of a extra wing we can put on here to get our capacity back up to what we need. So that'll fit that side. And then what we'll do is transfer that over here as well and put that on this side as well so by my calculations that'll get us back up to the same capacity that we had before and let's put that down there and then um, I'll try and get this back off so as you can see up in here the issue that we have is just how much lack of clearance we've got. So we've got the conrod here. So we want to make sure we clear that. And then there's also a windage throw to go back into the sump. And then through the centre here, there's actually a, um, a set of baffles as well. So when we add that side on, when we add this on to here, I'll probably leave this in and put some holes in it and that'll actually help with the slop as well. So now that we've got an idea where we're going, we'll actually be able to fold that up out of some aluminium and get it welded up. So a little bit more progress again with this box idea here. So we've now put a bit of um, two mil flat bar in around the top. So that's click out on from the outside at the moment. And then a bit of one mil around here so with that actual fuse box it comes in a plastic insert so it's got clips that clips in so we're going to actually probably urethane that to that bit of 50 by 2 mil or 3 mil i think it might be um, that runs around the top there and then this component here will actually drop in like the factory and clip in so it'll be able to be removed and then the rest of the structure will be welded in and be part of the job when it goes together and then I'm looking at the lid, this is the factory lid there, that will probably make something out of fiberglass I would think, or similar. It'll fit on there with some nice clips so it'll clip on. And then on the opposite side over here, we're going to make a similar thing, similar shape, similar size. And it'll have a lid on it as well, and it'll have under that lid the three tanks. One for the radiator, one for the um, power steering, and another one for the washer bottle. So that's sort of taking some shape now. Um, if I grab some Cleco pliers, I'll pull that off and show you. So people often ask about these. These are like a, a reusable rivet. So they go into a, an eighth hole. And with this sort of work, you can always just weld those holes up fairly quickly with the TIG or the MIG. So made that quite tight to fit in there couple of recesses on the edges so that when we go to weld it in it doesn't distort all over the place so you can see that flat bar there now so that'll be the main strength component and then those wires will all either go back into the car or out to the front of the car for the lights and then the other week I showed you these big holes we put everywhere to be able to take the, the cabling like that the reason they're so large is that there is the clip that's got to stay all as one component and it comes out back all the way around out through here across through the front all the way back to here and then inside the car into that pot box there that'll go into the back of the computer so that's why the holes are that size and that'll enable us not to have to disconnect any wiring so when it comes back from paint they'll just all feed back in in one piece and plug in with all the factory clips. 
So the, um, the coupe doors that I epoxied the other day and then did the SEM seal on them have now had a bit of bog put in where, where needed. Just a little bit along there to straighten up where we hammered them back on. A couple of little dents. Normally up at the, the lock end they've normally got a few dents from the seat belts and stuff. So we just try and make them back to original and that gets a coat of paint on it. Looks like we've never been there. This is another little thing I'm out here tonight just trying to tidy up loose ends. So this is the panel van bonnet. So this is the skin. Um, this was part of that series we're doing to actually remove the parts and clean them up and put them out together. So this particular bonnet was the reverse of most. I don't know if I can get a decent video of this, but the, the rust on this one was on the outside because it had, had a coat of acrylic, I reckon. And then as part of that process, that sucked in the moisture when it was sitting under a tarp. Uh, it's pretty hard to photograph, but they were quite deep. So I've been using the gel, the rust gel, to get rid of that. A tin of that over here somewhere I can show you. So this one here. You just put that on and leave it on for four or five hours and it gets in and eats all those black spots out. So I'm pretty happy. There's probably a couple of little ones I was trying to scratch out a bit. But that's pretty much ready now that when I'm going to get in a position to put some epoxy on it, I'll just give it another quick deoxidine and it'll be ready to go. So did you do tech drawing at school, Darren, or what? Nope. Nope? Wasn't no good at art. What about home design? No. Can't remember. Cooking. Cooking. That'll be right. <laughs> right, so we'll make a little cardboard cutout for that one. So this bottle here is a whatever brand, Aeroflow, that is a replacement for BABF FG. But I just happen to have in the container because they come with the ARS setup, which we didn't use once before. So that fits in there really nice. So now we're just going to make two other tanks to go in there. Make a couple of cardboard ones and then we'll look to get them made up. And we'll have the three lids there and then a cover to go over it and we'll just match the other side. Afternoon, Lake. Another good day's work, mate. Yeah, mate. We're getting there. So that's the, what, passenger side now? Uh, driver's side. Driver's side. side. Oh, it is too. We did yep. the passenger the other day. So, yes. um, I'm looking at the car back to front. <laughs> yep. Right, so that's ready to go in there. So we've just... Um, yep. So we've just lengthened it by about uh, two and a half feet. Yep. Um, and then these ones here will go forward now to headlights and um, shroud. Yep. And shroud. And then these here go back inside and plug into the dash. Yes. Well, it's per standard. Awesome. Yep. And the bucket full of leftovers. Mm. So once we come back from paint, this will be the process. You want me to hang on to that? Yes, please. Takes a little bit to feed her early, but... I'll hold the tongue in the right way. You probably put you on Benny Hill fast forward, mate. <laughs> yeah. That. Come forward through yeah. this hole. Yep. Yeah, she's down. Right. Click. That's what so we want to hear. Like that. Like that. Come along here. Need a bigger pillar, mate, for all the lights. <laughs> yeah. So, Darren, if you're trying to feed a wire up somewhere that it shouldn't go, you'll never get it there. Shove a wire in, it'll just go there without even asking. You should be good at that. It's about your fifth or sixth time now, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. It's like trying to feed spaghetti through by feel. <laughs> Okay, so once that one goes in there, we've then got the wires here go up to our 
wiper motor. Yes. One to the brake master cylinder. And then the side marker. That's up on there. And probably one for the ABS, I imagine. Yes. Right there. Nice. Yeah. Look. Stay there. There we go. Right, another week done. Um, weeks are clocking away, some of that's just getting closer. Wiring is obviously a big issue with this car with the whole FG thing. So last week um, we talked about putting the loom back in, so now we're at a position where Luke's got both sides done, um, we fed it in. So you can see here now I've got the bottles here that we were designing this week. So this one's an easy one, it's out of the packet. I'll get these now made out of aluminium. So this one will be, as you can see, 750ml will be our washer bottle. And this one will be the overflow feedback from the radiator. This radiator is just a mock-up. So we had this laying around, I think it come with the car actually. So we're going to go with a brass and copper radiator. I think they're better. Um, we'll get some tanks, nice brass tanks made. So I'll get that started now and then over here, this is pretty much tied up, this is almost ready to weld in now. So the steel's done, we'll actually probably urethane that outer housing from the FG, so that'll be a clip in. And that sort of puts all that to bed. Over this side, um, that wiring now all runs back inside the car. Just have a look at that Josh, I don't think we've seen that. So that wiring there um, has been lengthened and that'll all run back and pick up the master cylinder. Um, ABS brakes, all that sort of stuff, goes back inside, clips into the dash. Um, and then this week we also had the owner down on Friday and I was a bit slack and didn't get some footage of that. But I mean, so he was down, he come down with his mate that's an engineer up there that's doing the tuning and the programming for the ECU. And uh, I'm gonna get Luke to talk about that uh, in a minute just to let you know how that's gonna happen. So they were down, we worked through a few issues um, that we've got that we need to sort out in relation to the fly-by-wire, the ABS, um, but we're on a good track with that and it's looking good and hopefully next week I'll be show, I'll show you with the dash all back in and all hooked up. Right, so I said I'd have a chat with Luke, so you've all seen Luke a few times now. So Luke comes in and obviously does our electrical for us. I mean, I'm good at most things, but computers, don't, not my forte. So we had the engineer down on um, Friday yep. and Luke and Paul had a bit of time together. So Paul's from Anything Racing up in Queensland. And I'm just going to get Luke to explain in layman's terms how they're going to get this factory ECU, which is this fella, to actually talk to um, the V8 uh, old school with and still keep all the FG stuff running. Over to you. No worries. All right. Well, we've pretty much just simplified everything in this. Um, what Paul's come up with is we're going to run the MSD 6AL old school. Can't go wrong. Um, seems a little bit contradicting running such high tech and then going back to an MSD. Um, he's come up with uh, the solution to run this engine is the best way to run it as they ran it on the dyno in America and that was through an MSD. So to achieve that, um, Paul and a couple of these guys have developed this little ignition system that will convert the coil output on the computer into a system that the MSD can read. So um, as you can see, awesome little bit of gear well above my head how the hell it works but all we know is it's going to be able to convert the signal that comes out of this into a signal that the MSD can read and then we'll be able to run the, the engine off that and it should be happy days if it all works. So. And that also enables us we're going to run a single coil so yes. this computer is off a six cylinder FG so it's seeing six coils and through all this technology they now convert that around we'll run a single coil with a normal dizzy so when you look at the engine it looks old school single coil but the computer sees it as eight coils and converts the signal so that it'll run. Yes. All above my head, obviously, but it's the only above the left as well. <laughs> yes. Definitely. But working through anything racing, it's a plug and play. And yep. um, fingers crossed, it'll be all good. She will be. Where are we going? <laughs> Take Grandpa for a drive. Going for a cruise. Ready? Bye. <laughs> you going to drive, Charlie? Go! Oh no! Oh no, what happened? Beat the horn! No. Your car, okay. <laughs> oh! No, I'm gonna shut the door. <laughs> you see where you're going? Oh! <laughs>